All right. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Thank God for your presence this morning. I just muted everyone so that we could hear clearly. We're grateful for each and every one of you. Glad to hear uh, your voices, those that join us from far and from near. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for continuing to share with us um, on this prayer call every Sunday morning. The gospel, as reported by Luke, Luke's gospel, chapter 22, uh, verses 31 through 32. Luke 22, verses 31 to 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. King James Version says that your faith fails not. And when you have returned to me or when you have been converted, strengthen your brethren. This is the word of the Lord. Sisters and brothers, the Apostle Peter is one of the most exciting and fascinating personalities in the Bible. It's very interesting to see the transformation of Peter unfold before our very eyes. We see a fisherman who becomes a fisher of men. We see one who denied Christ become one who preached Christ. We see Peter transform from who he was into who Christ wanted him to be. And one of the things that I love so much about Peter is that Peter has a personal, close, and intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. In fact, Peter is part of that inner group or that inner circle of Jesus. There were 12 disciples, um, and then there were Jesus' core disciples, Peter, James, and John. And as a result of being in the inner circle or the core group of disciples, Peter gets the opportunity to see some things that others don't get to see. He gets to hear some things that others don't get to hear, and he gets to experience some things that the others don't get to experience, all because there was something special that Jesus had in store for Peter. And what we discovered is that even though Peter was in the inner circle, even though Peter had an intimate and personal and close relationship with Jesus, even though he saw and heard and experienced things that others did not, and even though Peter loved the Lord with all his heart, Peter still had another side to him. We've got to watch Peter um, because if we rub Peter the wrong way, Peter might tell us where to go and how to get there. Peter might use some uh, of those other words that we don't want the good saints to know that we know and that we know how to use. Peter might get mad enough and uh, pull out his knife and cut somebody. Quite honestly, I think the thing that I like most about Peter is that Peter reminds me of some church folks that I know. In fact, I like Peter because, quite honestly, Peter reminds me of me, and he encourages me to know that despite all his proclivities, Peter was still chosen by God. That's a good place to shout thank you, because somebody under the sound of my voice ought to join in with me and praise God, because even though we have all made um, a ton of mistakes and missteps, and even though we all have our shortcomings, our problems, our propensities, the good news is that God still chose us. He didn't choose us because of us, but he chose us regardless of us. We weren't chosen because of our pedigree and our economic status, our extensive background, nor our intellectual prowess. We weren't chosen because we were perfect, but God chose us because God wanted to perfect us. We were chosen because God knows what we will become. We were uh, on purpose chosen with a purpose. That simply means that we don't have to be perfect in order to be chosen. We don't have to have all our ducks in a row to be chosen. We don't have to have everything in order to be chosen. We don't have to have it all together to be chosen. In fact, we can all hang signs around our necks for all the world to read. Please be patient with me. God's not through with me yet. We're all works in progress. None of us have arrived yet. We still need some work done in us and on us, for us and through us. We still have 
a way to go, but the good news is that we're on our way. We may not be what we ought to be yet, but thank God we're not what we used to be. So, so God didn't make a mistake when Peter was chosen. No, Peter was chosen on purpose because he was chosen with a purpose. And we can shout about the fact that Peter isn't alone. God chose us on purpose because we all have a purpose. God already knew what we were when he chose us. God already knew what we've done when he chose us. God already knew what we would do when he chose us. But God wasn't concerned with what we were, what we've done, and what we would do. Instead, God was concerned with what we will become. Songwriter said, when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. And that ought to encourage somebody on the line this morning who keeps wondering to themselves, how did I get here? I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve, I don't deserve to be blessed like I am. I don't deserve to have what I have. Yep, you're right. We don't deserve it, but thanks be unto God that God looked beyond all our faults and saw every one of our needs, and then supplied our need according to his riches and glory. God chose us on purpose, all because God has a purpose for us. I shared all that information about Peter because where we are in this text is not where Peter started off. In fact, over in Matthew, the 16th chapter, is where Peter kind of gets his start. You remember that Jesus was having a conversation with his disciples. He asked them, who do men say that I am? And after hearing what the consensus is on the streets, Peter speaks up boldly and says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, flesh and blood haven't revealed that unto you, but my father in heaven, and thou art Peter, Petros, small stone. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'll give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Jesus prophesied to Peter, tells him that his profession of faith, his knowledge of who Jesus Christ really is, will serve as a foundation for the church of Jesus Christ, and not even hell will be able to prevail against it. And Peter, you have been given access to the keys of the kingdom. But even though he prophesied to Peter in Matthew 16, when we read Luke 22, we encounter a problem. Over in Luke, it's a Thursday night, and Jesus and the disciples are participating in the Passover. They're eating what will now be remembered as the Lord's Supper. There's a lot of conversation taking place at the table, and while they're discussing among themselves who will be the greatest disciple, Jesus sets the record straight and says, if you want to be the greatest, then you must learn to be a servant. After that, Jesus turns to Peter and says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desires to have you that he might sift you as we. The text begins by saying, Simon. Jesus refers to Peter by his pre-profession name, by his street name, by the name that he's referred to in the hood. You see, uh, in Matthew 16, Simon's name had already been changed to Peter, but now Jesus called him Simon. Uh, The name Simon means one who listens or one who hears. And maybe Jesus says, I need you to hear. I need you to listen to what I'm about to say to you. Not only does he call him Simon, but he calls him by that name twice. And oftentimes in the culture of that day, when someone called you more than once, it was an indication that you needed to pay real close attention to what was being said. In my experience, my parents didn't call my name twice. No, they just simply called me by my full name. And when they called me by my full name, I knew that whatever they were about to say was some serious business. And it probably meant that I had done something wrong 
and was in some type of trouble. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan, the adversary, the goal between, has desired to have you. He's demanding to have you back. Simply put, Satan has asked for you. Satan asked for Peter in the same way that he asked for Job. Simon, I know that you've had a name change. I know you've been walking with me for three years. I know that you've been privy to see and hear and experience some things that others have not. But you need to know that Satan has asked for you. Satan wants to sift you as wheat. According to the context, it would suggest that Satan has already been granted his request. However, you got to keep on reading because Jesus continues in verse 32 by saying, but I prayed for you. Don't miss this blessing. How in these two small verses of scripture, Jesus says that Satan has asked for permission to have you and he was granted that permission, but I prayed for you. (laughs) It suggests that while Satan was busy asking for you, the prayer that Jesus prayed happened in the past tense. Not, Not only did it happen in the past tense, but it happened even before Satan was granted permission to have you. In other words, even before God told the enemy yes, Jesus had already put in a prayer of intercession on Peter's behalf. That's my testimony this morning. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. And I'm so glad that they prayed. Even before the enemy was allowed to sift us, the Savior already prayed the prayer needed to save us. That's why we can't begrudge our sifting, because if we begrudge our sifting, then we'll belittle our shifting. Oftentimes, we get mad at what we must go through, not understanding that what we go through is all a part of the plan for us to get through. Why? Because Jesus already prayed for us. And notice, if you will, he didn't pray that it would be avoided. He didn't pray that he wouldn't have to go through. He didn't pray that God would eliminate it. But while Peter was dealing with it and going through it, Jesus prayed that his faith would fail not. And somebody needs to hear that on the line this morning, that even while we're going through whatever it is that we're going through, Jesus' prayer for us is not to lose our faith. My brother, my sister, no matter what, we can't lose our faith. When trials are on every hand, we can't lose our faith. When the issues of life weigh us down, we can't lose our faith. When we go through, and rest assured, we'll all have to go through something. We can't lose our faith. When something happens that we don't like or care for, we can't lose our faith. Jesus has prayed for us, and if something is going on in our lives, it's there because God knows that we can handle it. And the reason why I know we can handle it is because Jesus has already prayed for us. So be not dismayed. Whatever betides you, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide, God will take care of you. But that's that's not all. Jesus prayed that Peter's faith fail not. And he prayed when you were converted to strengthen your brother. It, it, it is. Uh, it, it said when when you're converted. Notice, if you will, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. Good news is that our present condition doesn't cancel out our prophetic certainty. That's a different message. But Jesus says, when Simon Peter, uh, when you have been fully persuaded 
that for God you live and for God you die. When you have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. When you have made the choice to not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you have been fully persuaded that nothing shall separate you from the love of God, when your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness, when you have been converted, then he says you can strengthen your brother. Sisters and brothers, uh, Jesus called Peter on purpose for the purpose of strengthening the brethren. And that's all I really wanted to share with us this morning. God calls us on purpose so that we can fulfill our purpose of strengthening our sisters and brothers. After we've been shifted, then we ought to move towards strengthening. After we have gone through the fire and after we have been through the flood, after we have been broken into pieces and seen lightning flashing from above. Through it all, we've got to remember that he loves us and he cares, and he'll never put more on us than we can bear. When we've made it through, then our testimony can help to strengthen somebody else. Songwriter said, I am a living testimony. I could have been dead and gone. I should have been dead and gone. I would have been dead and gone. But, Lord, you let me live on. I am a living testimony. And I thank you, Lord, for keeping me alive. When we have been fully persuaded, that's when we can persuade others that God is able to do anything but fail, that God is able to do just what he said he'd do. He's going to fulfill every promise to me and you. So don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able. We can tell somebody that there is no secret what God can do, what he's done for others, he'll do for you. We can testify that there's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. None else can heal all our soul's diseases. No, not one. No, not one. We can encourage someone to know that Christ paid it all, and all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed us whiter than snow. We can tell somebody that God is able to do just what he said. We can tell somebody that God is, God can, God will. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as we, but I prayed for you, and I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm so glad that Jesus prayed for us. In fact, Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us day and night. And I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm so glad that I'm able to do what I can do. I'm able to keep on moving on. I'm able to make it through because Jesus prayed for me. God, we're grateful and we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that you have given us to come together, to share together one with another. God, we want to say thank you. Thank you that even when the enemy asked permission to attack, even when the enemy asked to receive, even when the enemy asked to come after each of us, and even if and when he was granted permission, we've got the assurance to know that Jesus prayed for us and that Jesus continues to pray for us. So, God, we want to say thank you. Thank you, God, because we are all living testimonies. We all could have been dead and gone. We all should have been dead and gone, but it's because of you that we live on. And for that, Lord, we want to say thank you. Thank you for another day's journey that you have brought. 
Thank you for allowing us this opportunity to come before you. Oh, God, even at this moment, this hour that we put aside to pray. And, God, we say thank you because we know that you hear our prayers. And, God, not only do you hear us, but, God, that you are actively working on our behalf, God, to make sure that we do all that we need to do for you. So, again, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you for how you blessed us. Thank you for how you kept us. Thank you for how you've loved us. Thank you for how you blessed us. Thank you for how you've forgiven us. Thank you, God, for how you have supplied our every need. Thank you, God, for being uh, our way maker, our miracle worker, our promise keeper. Thank you, God, for being our light in the darkness. Thank you, God, for being all that you are. And then, God, we want to thank Jesus for being our intercessor. Thank the Holy Spirit for taking our utterings and our groanings and moanings and making sense of it to you, God the Father. We thank you even now for the prayers of Jesus. We thank you, God, because we know, God, that if it had not been for you on our side, we'd be like a ship without a sail. And so we come to you this morning recognizing all that you are and all that you have been and all that you will continue to be to each and every one of us. We're acknowledging, God, that we, we owe you all because you did all for us. You sustain us. You take care of us, God, even when we take, can't take care of ourselves. And so, Lord, we want to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness, God. Thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. Thank you for your power that's made strong in our weakness. God, we say thank you. There are those on the line this morning, and I don't know what they might be going through. I don't know what they're dealing with. I don't know what the situations are in their lives. But, God, I pray that they will be encouraged by your word this morning to know that Jesus has prayed for them and that even when they don't know what's going to happen and they don't know how things will work out and turn out, that they can be assured that all things work together for our good, God, uh, because you have uh, allowed us to go through, it's all right because you're still working things out. You're still maneuvering some things and shifting some things and changing some things. And even when we don't understand it now, we can understand it better by and by. So, God, again, we say thank you. And whatever it is that your people are going through, God, I pray that you'll touch now from the crown of their head, even now to the sole of their feet, that you will meet every need in their life by your word. Your word says that you shall supply all of our need according to your riches in glory. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. God, I pray uh, for this day of worship. I pray, God, that um, that we will enter into your house, those that may be going to the house of, of worship, God, and those that may be joining uh, virtually, God, and those that may not have the capacity to get to you, God. I, I pray that, God, even on this day, you'll speak a word of peace. God, a word of encouragement, God, a word of correction, God, a word that of change, God, a word of transformation, a word that will allow us to become more and more uh, like your son, Jesus Christ, a word that will continue to grow us and continue to lift us and continue to help us to become what you desire for us to become in these last and evil days. God, we thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you're in the midst of doing. God, there are those that might be sick on the line, those that might be interceding for those who are sick on the line. And we pray that you will touch them in the mighty name of Jesus, God, that your will be done in their lives and that we will be able to accept the will, your will, that you have for our lives. God, we pray for all the war and all of the stuff that's going on in our country. We pray for the wars and different things that are going on outside of the country. God, we pray for everything, God, that um, seems to be in a chaotic state, God, around us. And we pray, God, for peace. And we pray, God, for understanding. 
understanding, and we pray, God, for love, and we pray, God, for guidance and direction in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing right now, and we give you glory in advance for what you're going to do. God, we believe it done by faith, and we seal our prayer in the only name that matters. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let all of God's people say, amen. 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 Amen.